All right, I think this will work today. Doesn't seem to be having any problems. Nice. All right, I'm gonna do a mashup. So I need to go in here to texture, import, and I'm going to grab, oops, a reference image here. I'm gonna copy this folder in case I need to go back in there. And let's grab this one. So we're gonna do, I missed last month's stream, so we gotta do two birds, one stone here. So I'm gonna scale this up. And you know, this is just adding it to Spotlight. Texture, import, select your uh, reference, click this little plus and minus sign that adds it to Spotlight. I'm gonna crank this opacity down and then maybe scale it up just a bit. And you're gonna see the pure blacks are going transparent. I'm gonna take this intensity, I'm gonna drag that to the right just to make my pure blacks dark gray. And I think I'm good to go. Just the basic um, shapes that I wanna make. So also just in case it's been a little bit crashy for me lately. So I'm gonna go in here to texture and we're gonna say spotlight, save spotlight. And I'm just gonna throw this into my reference folder here. We'll call this O2. That'll save it as a spotlight O2. And we're gonna get started. So sphere 3D, hit Z to go into uh, spotlight mode. So shift Z to turn it off, Z to turn it on with a gizmo, the widget, and then Z to turn the widget off and just start sculpting. Go in here to edit mode. We have X cross X symmetry here. And I'm gonna go ahead and position this little sphere here. Let's go ahead and say, make poly mesh 3D so we can sculpt on it. Here's our subtool menu. I'm going to say movie, timeline, show, click. And then if you ever, so now if I ever move this ball around, I can just use my arrow keys to snap it back. I'm gonna to snap to the right, and then we'll put this right in here and we'll go ahead and scale this down a little bit. And we'll click, and now I don't even need to see these anymore, so I can go in here and turn off show. And then now I can start sculpting and we are, if I turn on floor, we're Z forward, Y up, we're in good shape. And actually, uh, there is one thing I wanna talk about. Um, let's see here. Hey, hey everybody. <laughs> I missed last month, I apologize. I'm a, a lazy, lazy man. Let's go ahead and close this out. Um, so we are using 2023.0.1. I do, you know what, right off the bat, let's say always switch control N to clear our canvas. And let's hit Z to get out of, oops, shift Z to get out of here. I'm gonna hit the comma key real quick. We'll go into tool and we'll load up everybody's favorite demo soldier here. Uh, there was an important change, so uh, blah, blah, let me get reoriented here. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Okay, YouTube playlists. Uh, I have a ZBrush 2023 What's New playlist going on here, so if you want to catch up. I haven't done the rendering stuff yet. I've, I was not getting a clean record, so I gotta go back and try that. Uh, it's not on here yet. However, the very first video right here, the quick start uh, dynamic symmetry, that's what I want to talk about because it changed just slightly and uh, this is version of ZBrush. So uh, if we go through here, what's a good example to talk about? I guess the knee pads here. So uh, dynamic symmetry is basically, uh, you control the symmetry. Actually, we'll do this. The dog just as a real quick overview here. Uh, we have here, we have X symmetry turned on and we're sculpting in symmetry, right? And then if I go in here with my gizmo and then I kind of move this over and then I try to sculpt in symmetry, I can't because it's across the world axis. If I turn on the floor, there's my world axis symmetry. Um, and symmetry, of course, is under transform. Nope, this side I said. Uh, activate symmetry across the X is the default. Of course, you can activate symmetry in any X, Y, or Z or radial. However, if I hit W, oh, also make sure your focal shift is down to negative 100 so it doesn't do weird stuff. Uh, so as we're going through here, and we, of course, we wanna still sculpt in symmetry, just go over here, turn on local sim, and 2023.0.1, um, which I just realized my banner here says 2022, boy. I'm off to a great start. So local symmetry, this little dynamic button, when that is on, now your gizmo axis symmetry will control your symmetry. So now you can sculpt in symmetry um, as long as your gizmo, and of course you can reorient the, orient the gizmo. You know what, I'll just go ahead and this one here, copy link address, this one specifically. Um, now all you need to have is dynamic symmetry on. Uh, which is useful because if you ever needed the original functioning of the L-SIM, uh, so if you just turn that dynamic off and go in here and we say, you know, grab a sphere, uh, split mass points, put some sweet eyeballs in here. 
Now local symmetry will behave just as it did in previous versions of ZBrush. And then if you want, so like if you wanted to do eyeballs or something and just have symmetry across the x-axis. So if I turn off x here and we just scoot this over and then hit x again. If I turn off local symmetry, of course I'm across the world axis. Local symmetry on, I'm across the local axis, but I have to be forward in x, y, or z. Uh, that's the only caveat. And then if I want to, um, you know, go off axis, I need to turn dynamic on. But so this is the old uh, symmetry settings. That's all I wanted to talk about. Get rid of all this stuff. Get it out of here. Poly mesh 3D. You know what? We'll call this body. Okay. Shift Z. Use my arrow keys. Uh, let's make this really quick. So I'm going to go in here to my move brush. We're going to say move this up a little bit here. So we've got his body and we're going to move it back a little bit. He's got that little pudgy kind of belly and he's very confident stance here. And okay, we're almost done with Mario. We're getting there. So I'm going to go through here and I'm going to do, um, it's going to go to my custom menu here. Of course, you could go BI brush insert IM and primitives. I'm fancier than that. So I'm going to go in here and grab a different type of cylinder because that's the way I like it. And then of course, um, so here we have LSIM turned on with dynamic turned off, uh, which is just what I would want for these arms. I'm going to say split mass points, which is under your subtool split menu. And we'll just start dialing these arms. Uh, and if I want to bend these arms, if I go through here and um, let's go ahead and set this down the axis of that insert mesh brush. I'm going to say bend curve, put in maybe one uh, more thing of resolution. And now I can use this as a way to kind of, oh, I also don't have any resolution on here. So I'm going to go into my Z modeler brush, hover over an edge, insert, hover over an edge, insert multiple edge loops. Yeah, I like to do keep poly group. And then I'm just going to crank that up a little bit. There we go. Now I can bend my arms with a little noodle bend curve. Yoink, yoink, yoink. Now, of course, we need to look at the side view here. I'm just going to take this whole thing back. And we don't have to be all that fancy. We can just literally use our move brush. No big deal. All right. Again, one more leg here. Oops, let's turn off LSIM. World axis is fine. And again, we'll say split mass points. If you want to, you can thicken these up by holding down Alt and scaling across this. Of course, now we have the world axis, so that's not great. So let's turn Elson back on and we'll scale on that world axis or the local axis there. And we'll snap back. Ugh, stylized characters. What are they? They're primitive shapes. They're fun though. So insert multiple edge loops. Bloop, bloop, bloop. You know the drill. We need a little more resolution here and then we'll go to the side view and these aren't as bendy so we'll go ahead and just kind of dial in this look and the reason I'm going fast is because I already have this guy modeled I just need to do it for my usual hey you want to make this follow along and then everybody on YouTube will be like if I was watching this movie I would say no to ZBrush because you talk too fast and I'm not learning the way I like to learn so I do this for you, YouTube commenters. So here is the arms, body, legs. We're kind of almost done here. Let's go ahead and here, I'm gonna keep doing quick save. That is on your keyboard, number nine on your keyboard. Um, cool, Steven, we'll, we'll find something, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. I don't know that I'm using a ton of new techniques for this, but. Ah, cool. Yes, yes. Uh, and good to see you, John Yu. Hopefully, um, hopefully you have a good week. We got over our ice storm here in Austin. And uh, I was very, one of the very, very lucky ones that made out A-OK. -okay. You know what? Let's go ahead and put a little neck in here. We'll just say a cylinder here. Yoink. Split mass points. Even though I can't really see a neck in the concept, that's going to come in handy when I need to rotate things around. Let's go ahead and scale that out a little bit here. And then right on top of here, oops, we'll go in here to a sphere. And you know what? Let's, I need a little more resolution here. So we'll go ahead and put this on here. And once again, we'll say split mass points. Womp, womp, womp. And then we need to go out of that so I can use this. So 
Uh, cranium will be somewhere in here. And then I'm going to control drag down and we're just gonna make kind of the bottom of his face filled out a little bit more. And then his cheeks. We'll go ahead and just kind of pop on some cheeks here and we'll say split mass points. So I can go through here, ah, come on. There we go. So this one we'll go ahead and put into place. And again, just kind of use your move brush, mush it around. We'll put a hat on here and then his chin and then his cheeks. Cheeks, let's go back because they're kind of like this, right? And if you ever want to, I usually will do like a zero mesh or same adapter size down to zero just to kind of get rid of any of those polarized caps if it's bothering you. Those poles. And then, yeah, these cheeks kind of just wrap around here. So big chubby cheeks. And then for the nose here, one more sphere. I tell you stylized characters, primitives, split mass points here. Goodness move this down. Now I'm kind of having a little bit of a hard time seeing, so I may have to go in and let's see, E, yoop, scale, move here, 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 uh, ear, let's go ahead and do, we'll do a cylinder on the side here, and again split mass points, and we'll scale it in, oops, let's turn on LSIM real quick, yoink, all right, Got our ear shape, and this is gonna be one of those cylinders too. Uh, again, you could go in here and say, you know, group by normals and then zero mesh, have same, keep group, smooth groups down to zero and like get nice control geometry too. Uh, or you can just zero mesh. Again, we're just kind of doing general shapes here. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. And it's gonna it's gonna go fast whenever we. I mean, I, honestly, I also I don't need to have this like to the nines. It just needs needs to be somewhat representative. Uh, for this head here, in fact, we can just duplicate this head off and say, yoink yoink, move this up, do a quick save. Um, and I'm just gonna take this top one, little piece of it, Control Shift A, delete hidden, geometry modify topology, delete hidden. Take that off your bingo card, and then we'll go ahead and. Move this into place, and again, we're just making a hat. How easy is it to make Mario? Now, for the bottom of the hat, it's just kind of on his head. I'm gonna hold down Control Shift. We're gonna go in here to Knife Curve, and let's do a slice right here, it looks like. There we go. So now on this one, cool thing about knife curve is it'll slice through nicely and give me a new poly group. I can do zero mesh same, dash slice down to zero, keep group, smooth groups down to zero, zero mesh. And now we've got a new mesh here that is fairly hat-like. And if we want to pull a brim off that hat, let's go ahead and let's duplicate this off. And we want to pull a brim kind of out of here. So let's do this. Let's do bevel, edge loop complete here. And maybe not that wide here. And I'm going to say, actually, you tell me, where's my brim? Hit Z, let's get our, there it is. So about here, oh, way over there. Okay, so we're just going to take all of these, this little strip right here, Control Shift Tap, get rid of everything but that one, Delete Hidden, uh, oh, Q Mesh, Poly Your Ball, yo. And then I want to move this side here. So I'm going to hold down Control Alt Mask Lasso, go into solo mode, and we'll put it over here. And we'll say this brim needs to match vaguely this. And then Control Tap to invert that mask. And it goes back here. And then it goes forward, unmask, and we'll match this a little bit better. Now let's see. Did we actually ma match it? Yeah, vaguely. All right, got this guy blocked out. And if you ever get a little bit wobbly, like as we're moving stuff around, um, it's not generally a huge deal, but what we can do is, let's go ahead and set this guy up with different poly groups. Let's also make it so you can see it. There we go. So hold down Alt, and I'm gonna let go of Alt and just keep tapping Alt to get new poly groups here. Let's make that more obvious, there we go. So we have a poly group in the back, the side and the front. So now when I go into deformation polish by features and just tap 
that open circle, or no, closed circle, we're going to maintain our volumes. We are going to smooth that shape out. Um, and in fact, you know what? Let's hold down Alt and then Shift so I can make this all one poly group. So now I can go in here and increase PG, hit D for dynamic, which will turn on geometry dynamic subdivision. So D and Shift D, and that'll give us that little curve here. And then we can just go in here and kind of play around with how these things should look. All right, hands, uh, B, I, brush, insert, I, M, M, body parts, M, hand, drag, split, rotate. Um, yeah, go to unmesh mesh center, please. Thank you. Here, let's turn off. Uh, you know, I'll keep LSM on just because we need to be on our local axis here. And now this one, um, I'm not going to keep these wholesale. He's got stubbier hands, so I'm just going to kind of scale these inwards a little bit, like so. And they'll be open, so I won't make him have fists yet. Maybe we'll take him into Character Creator and rig him up a little bit. We'll see how far we get. Okay, so we've got this. Uh, of course, first things first, fatten him up. He's got chubby cheeks and chubby hands, and we can go in here to Deformation Inflate a little bit. And I guess we'll go ahead and keep this geometry for now. Um, we can always zero measure real quick. And I'm also need to give him a lot of space in between his fingers, because like I said, they are chubby. So what I can do is I can hold down control and then just drag down and it'll follow the geometry. There we go. Here, here, here. I guess that's fine. Let's move that pinky forward just a little bit. Again, this is not imperative that we get this exactly right. Okay, so Shift Z back here. Oh boy, those are huge. Um, all right. I mean, if the reference says we got to do it, uncomfortably chubby. So let's go through here and let's do it. I'm gonna do a quick polish by features. Oh uh, no. Um, so see how we're getting these kind of built in. Okay, before I do that, we're getting these kind of built in fingernail things. Let's do Shift D. Uh, I'm gonna do a zero measure same. Turn off key groups just to hit zero mesh. And in fact, just because I like it, I'm going to go in here. If I haven't subdivided, I'm going to go in here to close convex hole. And we'll just tap this little thing here. There we go. Now, let's see. Yeah. Inflate. Actually, I keep changing my mind. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to take all these fingers here. Again, it's not a huge deal, but I'm just gonna take these fingers here and I'm just going to make them a little bit strainer. And we'll go ahead and manually fix some of these. If you want to move stuff around, we got our brush auto masking, topological, we'll change that range down to like 1.5. Of course, you can go in here to BMT, which is move topological, which does pretty much what I just said. But I always have my brush settings open, so why not? All right. And now we're ready to finally do our inflate. Whew. Okay. Um, if you know what, if we do want to put that little, uh, that little roll, or that what is that? It's a little glove, um, little Mickey Mouse thing. Uh, let's go ahead and I don't know if we need to do it just yet, but we can add that pretty easy to see modeler. Yeah, we'll leave it alone for now. Uh, okay, mustache, quick save. Um, let's go to the nose here. Oh, e -M. I have a plane I can drop in here. I knew it. I knew it. That's why I did a quick save. Saved it. Whew. Give it a sec. Oh, how are we doing over here in the comments? Uh, hi from Zimbabwe, way over there. Glad you could join us. Um, let's go in here. So again, I did have a quick save so I can just load this up. Oh, I forgot to save my timeline. Luckily, um, oh, it also probably have your recover tool here so you didn't lose anything, but I did have some timeline stuff, right? Did it save it? I think so. Yeah, if you ever want to also, we can say movie um, timeline save and I can just pull this in here. Let's say. Oh, two, just in case. Uh, so now I do need to bring in my texture, load spotlight, bada bing, and then Z. Okay, back where we started. 
Okay, uh, no selected. Plane mid. Yoink. Split mass points. Scale it up. Go through here. I'm going to turn off the smooth modifier. Divide, 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 divide. One million polygons. Cakewalk for ZBrush. Who cares? Turn off show. Um, let's do this. B, P, A for our paintbrush. RGB is turned on. Brush samples. Spotlight projection is turned on. So now I can literally just paint his face on this plane. But all I really want, we'll go in here to white. Um, ah, B, P, A. Uh, RGB intensity down. Color fill object a couple times and now I can go through here and you know what let's do delete higher I don't need that much geometry this is fine delete lower so now I've got some geometry I've got as much as where it needs to be let's hold down control shift go in here to let's try this let's try a slice circle here and to kind of see what we're doing so if I as I slice through here I'll turn on polyframe and turn off line and I'm basically just going through here and just taking the shapes of his mustache here and then we'll go in here to control shift slice curve we'll grab this one geometry modified topology delete hidden and now I can go through here and I can tap alt once to get that little bend curve and then alt twice to get the sharp curve and I can go through here you can use masking but sometimes I like to change it up there we go Delete hidden. Let's do a deformation mirror across the X. Geometry modified topology mirror and weld. Oh, that's fine. And uh, we'll say delete hidden. Oh, we already did. So there's my basic mustache shape. Eh, you know, it's not, not perfect. There we go. Here, and again, slices aren't symmetrical, so we have to do a um, mirroring it to the negative X side and then mirroring and welding it to hit the other side. So we'll turn line back on. We'll go ahead and say half, zero mesh, half, 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 half 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 okay so right about here I'm going to take my move brush with AccuCurve turned on so we can pull out to a point here and then we'll just kind of make sure that everything's fine these little lumps are where they're supposed to be here half yeah look at that so we've got a mustache um, if you want to commit let me turn this let me get that rid of this it's in my face go away uh, if you want to you can go through here and say okay I want a cube mesh polygroup all or extrude polygroup all with your Z model brush BZM and give it some thickness oops looks like I, I don't know why I'm being a perfectionist again this is just for show um, or if you don't want to commit you can go in here to dynamic and we can say okay turn on dynamic turn off smooth add a little bit of thickness here and then this is just dynamic so shift D to turn it off D to turn it back on yes and then we'll scoop that back. So uh, it's not where his mustache is supposed to be. So we'll put this back on his face somewhere. And we'll Boolean out that top part eventually. But we'll go ahead and move it into place. Boop. Ta-da. And then from the side view, we need to bend it back. Easy way to bend something back like this is go in here and say bend arc. And then it's just one of the cool deformers. And we'll just take this and yoink. And then maybe take this radius and yoink. Yeah. Okay, make sure this matches. Move brush. Yeah, good enough. Yeah, that works. All right. Um, oops. Geometry modified topology, mirror and weld. Make sure we don't have any bad stuff. Okay, X axis symmetry. Turn that on. By, of course, tapping X on your keyboard. Let's go ahead and round out his little bottom here so it attaches to something. There we go. And we got his arms. Yay. Legs with a little bit of a knee in it. Good enough. And now we just need to do his eyeballs. Eyeballs, of course. Z spheres. Quick save. I'll tap the head here. Split mass points. Scale. Uh, again, I don't need the polarized stuff, so we'll just do half, depth size down to zero. Uh, depth size down to zero, by the way, is just to make sure that, uh, we'll just kind of stuff those back in there, just to make sure that um, uh, the, the quads, it makes the quads uh, 
more, uh, it makes the polygons more square. <laughs> is all that is. Um, nice. Dealing with the dog. I hope nothing serious. Cool. Uh, right on. I'm glad to, glad to be live again. Ah, uh, yes, it does say 2022. You know, why, why would I have a perfect stream when I could uh, have a mistake right off the top? <laughs> um, how do you quick switch between the front and the side view? That's just um, so you can just use my arrow keys, I think. Yeah, use my arrow keys because we have movie timeline show in here. In fact, if you ever want to do like go to YouTube here and then we might have to scroll over and we'll say <clears throat> reference. Here's spotlight reference modeling, copy link address, and you can check that out. Same deal. Um, reset light position to default. Bef when you first start up ZBrush, go in here to light, save. Um, and then, or, you know, if you want a light rig, just save it out. And then if you ever mess up your lights, load it up. And I think it'll overwrite all your lights. <clears throat> but as far as like, if you've moved it, I have no idea. I'm not sure that there's a way to do that. Um, cutting a plane with a knife curve is not working unless it's thickness minus buggy working. Yeah, uh, knife curve, I think it likes to be able to slice through something and close a hole if it doesn't have a hole um, to close, then it's probably not going to do it. In that case, just use slice as opposed to knife. I'm doing good, thank you. Um, crashes a lot with Zimation. Uh, Z Modeler. Uh, Z Modeler, uh, insert mesh brushes, I've noticed. Z Modeler, I'm not sure. Um, uh, hey, Yarav, I think I, I thought I did. Sorry if I didn't answer those emails. Happy to see you too. Cool. Uh, how do you set a quick menu with custom settings, how to turn it on? So your quick menu. Go in here and we'll say custom menu. Boom, custom interface with menus, copy link address. That you can set up your own custom menu like mine, which is under Pav, oh, Pav Custom. You can hold down Control Alt and click Pav Custom or your menu and then assign a hotkey to it. And then now whenever I hit that hotkey, it just pops in right here where I need it. Yeah, okay, so uh, we got our eyeballs, we got this, we got that. Uh, we need shoes. <clears throat> Just like everything else in stylized land, we're gonna start with a sphere and we're gonna drag that sphere out and we're gonna say split mass points. Um, <clears throat> go through here and we're gonna switch sides. Um, there we go. Okay, so first part of the sphere, let's go ahead and reset it to world. We'll stretch this out. And again, I can I don't really care too much about the bottom because that's going to end up being sliced off just like we did the hat. Uh, we'll control drag off a little copy of this. We'll make this a little bit smaller here. And then now we need to make it shoes, right? So just go through here and be like, okay, shoes, what are they? First, you know, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So let's go ahead and say right at this moment, we're going to say first <laughs> W. Uh, remesh by union that does a uh, boolean operation so I can go through here and now they're all stitched together and then now we can say control shift go in here to instead of slice we'll do knife because we got a close holes operation here and then right on the top actually let's go through here and we'll do a cylinder um, you know we'll do a higher res cylinder 32 so yoink so now this is just kind of my shoes. Let's go ahead and fatten this up. Let's turn on L Sim. Yoink. And a little thinner. All right. So we've got this here and plugged in and moved like so. Um, if I'm going to be doing Boolean Z remesher stuff, what I do want to do though is isolate this one, do a group by normal. So these are going to come in handy. So if I was to go in here and say, you know what, let's do a quick remesh by union, and then I want to do like a zero mesh half, depth of size down to zero, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, it'll look at my poly groups and give me new geometry. Instant, instant stylized modeling. And then we're gonna go through here. So the little, we got a little bend in our foot with a little toe that points a little bit maybe, and then this goes back to a heel, and then this goes to just a flat side. 
And again, if you start getting wobbly, deformation polish supply features is your friend. And now we've got just a basic pair of shoes and we'll make sure that this actually comes out quite a bit more. We'll give them a little bit more of a stable base here. And these are super round. You normally we have a pair of boots that like slopes off, you know, big toe to little toe. I don't know that Mario's got a ton of that going on. Maybe a little. Uh, yeah, we have a big bubble here. Okay, shift C, double check our work. Yeah, yeah we got to keep that bubble. Let's hold down control and just mask the bottom here so we can keep that flat. Okay, and then now if we're ready for the bottom of the feet here, let's go ahead and do a quick uh, polish by features. Um, we can simply, let's do this, control, let's duplicate this off, control shift tap the green, delete hidden. Uh, Q mesh, polygroup all, and then we want to, I'm going to do this, X symmetry off temporarily, grab a little piece, control shift A, delete hidden, control shift, knife curve, hold down your space bar, brush radius, <gasps> hold down, alt, let go, zero mesh, half, keep groups, ta-da, and now we have a little slice thing. Now, this needs to move forward, um, should we slide it or collapse it? We'll collapse it. I'm going to collapse this edge forward. So the heel is going to go straight down. The bottom of the foot is going to kind of lean forward a little bit. And you know what? We'll go ahead and collapse this back. Again, using our Z model brush, B, Z, M. Oh man, I can't wait for the YouTube comments on this one because I am going fast. Crease PG, um, dynamic. We can do like crease level two, smooth subdiv three. That's all under here under your geometry. All the stuff I'm saying, by the way, I keep bringing this up. But if you're ever like, what are you talking about, Z modeler? Is that even a word? Kind of. So here's all your Z modeler basics and some other Z modeler stuff. Uh, I guess I could see YouTube. Eh, just YouTube. That's me. Check it out. And then also, if you want to get caught up, 2023 is not on here yet because I'm an idiot. But um, here's intro to ZBrush and then all the what's new stuff right here. A little bit easier to see. And there's also some gooder gooders in there faster faster um i need that i need some metallica playing cool excellent of course um yeah we're good all right uh, let's see if we can go a little bit faster for y'all so we have our uh, boots here oh uh, i do need to kind of twist these boots don't i that was great uh let's do this uh w I'm gonna do control shift drag over these two, control shift Q, which is polygroup grow all, mask and invert that. Something fell, hope it wasn't important. <laughs> Scooch this in here a little bit. Now I got two separate pieces. Uh, so I wanna go in here to move multiple, grab both of these and then scoot these in and let's double check our work. So from the side, I think we're fine. From the front, he has a severe Here's the thing, if you're gonna go in and rig this thing, which we might do, you're gonna wanna keep those legs a little straighter and the feet a little straighter, um, or at least all in the same plane. This one doesn't. I'm gonna go ahead and just match the reference because for the people at home, probably you're not going to be rigging this, so just we'll just match it, but just in case you're listening in. Okay, so something like this, um, and let me just Put this up here so I can kind of see it. Your comments are in the way. There we go. Okay. Uh, yep, yep, yep. We can fatten these up a little bit. We can drape these down a little bit. And I think we're good to go. So we got our, I wouldn't even call this a block out. I'd call this like shape, shape land. We got everything we need. We'll do the hair later, eyebrows later, overalls later. Yeah, we're in good shape. So we have two components. We have overalls and a shirt, and the overalls and the pants, or we have shirt and then overalls, which includes the pants. So let's do this. Shift, bent down arrow, shoot it to the bottom, alt tap the arm, shift, bent down arrow. I'm just gonna look at both of these. I'm gonna need this part again, so I'm just working through this. Body, duplicate this off. So we have a body and arms. I'm going to do some Boolean work. So I'm gonna go in here to solo mode. We're gonna say group by normals, geometry modified topology, mirror and weld. Let's turn off LSIM. There we go, so it's the same on both sides. And I'm gonna hit 
uh, underneath your geometry crease menu, you have a crease PG that will crease your polygroup. So I'm going to hit D for dynamic, which we talked about. And that will go ahead and give me a smooth preview. And then for the body here, um, body I think will be fine. I think that's got enough geometry. Basically what I'm getting at is I'm going to Boolean these two together. Um, and we can just do it like we did before. Uh, oh, before I do that though, let's turn off move multiple. I'm going to move these arms out because I want the ge I want the geometry to be a little bit more contiguous. Am I good? Yeah. And also this shirt um, isn't going to be part of the overall, so I'm going to knife the bottom. Oh, turn off the radius. Oh no! <coughs> Boys, it's starting to go. Sorry. Okay, so we have a body, we have arms. I'm gonna go ahead and just merge these down. That's under your subtool merge menu. Um, you know what, let's hit D for dynamic. Uh, you know what, let's do this. We don't need to do dynamic because we're just gonna do like a dynamic Boolean, but they're together, it's subdivided, we're good to go. So let's hit W, go in here and do a remesh by union without, so delete lower, Remesh by union, and just like through the magic of everything we've been doing so far, X symmetry is turned on. Oh, what? Huh. Well, maybe we won't. Let's see. Let's see if this does anything different. Both these visible. Let's go down here to Boolean. Turn on live boolean so we can do a union. Let's go look at this. Yeah, that one worked. Hmm. Remesh by union did something weird. No big deal. So, half, depth size down to zero. Keep root smooth goes down to zero. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, I forgot about one thing though. We need his neck. We need his neck for his head and we also need his neck for this. So let's go back in here. Let's turn everything else back on. I need a little neck for his shirt. So we're going to alt tap. Is that where his neck is? Maybe a little bit further in. Ah, he's got a big head. So I'm going to hold down shift, shoot that to the bottom here. And then we'll go back to our shirt and we'll just append that neck. Um, also, make sure you have X symmetry on. That'll make it go faster and we want a symmetrical mesh anyways. For this one, we'll say again, group by normals because we want that top poly group. Hit control D after we do a crease PG. Merge. W, let's try this one. Remesh by union. Yeah, okay. Uh, again, X symmetry turned on. It turned it off and then apparition half. All right. We got a shirt. If it's ever doing anything really weird, let's go back a couple. <clears throat> you can help this out. I'm just going to go in here real quick. Collapse edge and collapse edge. Just, just wanting to build in these little inconsistencies and I don't want it to, so I'm just going to help it out. Now we'll do a zero mesh half. Should do a better job. Yeah, look at that. Um, maybe half one more time. Okay. So we'll go back to our body here. We'll say append what we are working on, our U mesh body. And now we don't need there we go. There's our U-Mesh body. So we don't need these working files. So this arms deleted. If you want to save a version of this, you can. I do. Um, the body, we duplicate it off. Don't need it anymore. The neck we'll use for the overall. So we've got our shirt here. So let's go ahead and rotate these arms down again. Just like we did before. Control Shift grab. Control Shift Q. Mask and invert. You can even Control Tap to kind of feather that mask a little bit. And then we can kind of move these down, rotate them back down into place here, and let's go in here and scoot out these arms a little bit. Now if we need to, again, if we're like, if I'm doing a bad job and it's like, I'm really, really not doing this geometry any favors, we can do a zero mesh same with polygroups turned on, we'll be fine, but eh, that's great. I like calling my own work great. That's great job, Mike. Okay, um, now this neck is probably a little bit high, so let's go ahead and let's do this. Insert single edge loop, hold down Alt, and then I'm going to say Q mesh polygroup ball, and let's hold down Shift and push down. That way I don't have to mesh. It still wanted to do something a little weird down here, didn't it? 
I didn't catch it. That's okay. Alt, shift. I'm not going to see this anyways. So, caps lock off. There we go. Move. And again, get wonky. Go in here and say, pause my features. Um, close circle, maintain volumes. Good enough. So, we have a shirt. Now we need overalls. So, how are we going to do that? First, we need to make sure we have polygroups where you want them. Group by normals. Geometry modified topology, mirror and weld. Yes, yes. Um, the body here. Yes. Yes. Uh, and I think that's it. So, with these two showing... Actually, I need to know where they are. So, legs, shift down arrow. Body, shift down arrow. Eyeballs off. Um, let's go ahead. We'll do it this way. I won't say the right way, just another way. So D for dynamic, the body, we don't really need dynamic on. I think it's got enough geometry, it's smooth enough. So down here we have live Boolean turned on. We can turn show off. We're gonna go down here to dynamic subdivision, make Boolean mesh. Again, that'll pop out a U mesh of these things. We have X symmetry turned on, zero mesh half, that size down to zero, keep group, smooth groups down. Boom, boom. Actually, before we even do that, undo, undo, shift Z, turn this on, polyframe on. I need to know where these shapes are. So we're going to do, again, BPA for a paintbrush, RGB up. You know what? I always go to standard brush, RGB on, up to 100 Z add off, or use your paintbrush. I don't care. Standard brush. Just so you know, sample spotlight projection is on. So when we go through here, we can paint literally where the body's going to go. And if I want to, let's say color, RGB, color, fill object. Okay, so now I know where my overalls are, and I'm going to have nice contiguous geometry through here, but I need to modify this up here a little bit. So we're going to say, here's where his overalls go, and then they go back over his shoulders here, and then kind of swoop down around his neck. And then for his arm holes, we'll say they go here. Yep. So we need to cut. Oh, here's the thing. So I can close this off and go down here to uh, masking. Say, hey, mask region, analyze it. Control, fill, boom. Okay, so now going here to line, I'm gonna do an edge loop mask. So under geometry edge loop, there's an edge loop mask border. Um, didn't do a great job in that case, but that's fine because I can go through here. I can smooth these out here. Just again, polish by feature. Let's do open circle and just tap, tap. Okay. We got some pretty good overalls. I'm going to hold down control shift, get rid of the pink, I think. And then geometry modified topology, delete hidden, zero mesh half, half, half. Hmm. Undo. Okay. So we have some decent geometry, but this part of the overalls needs to come down and then come out in front of this part of the overalls. So let's see if we can't do that. So I'm gonna kind of just make this right here my line. And then I'm gonna go down here in this overlapping part, I'm gonna hold down Alt and just make a little uh, selection with my Z modeler brush. Uh, hold down Control and pop this out. And in fact, if you want to, you can tap Alt, give it a new poly group. So now that I've done that, um, I can go back here. Let's see, Control W, make that all one poly group here. So here, on this line from the front, yeah. So this line from the front needs to be generally kind of this shape, and then it'll cut straight across, and then this will overlap. So I'm gonna move these out of the way just a little bit more so I can think through this problem here. So again, this part of the overall will cut across, and then this will just be gone. This will be gone, and this will be gone. We'll keep these though. Oops, there we go. Geometry modified topology, delete hit. Let's W, control tap, so control tap. Push this back into space. So now we've got little overlapping overalls. So let's go ahead and stitch these. We're gonna say stitch two points, U to U, U to U, U, oop. Use my mouse, U and come on get it and 
W. So we have kind of a pair of overalls, and then let's go back into our move brush. I think we have auto masking up topology on 1.5 range. So now I'm going to take these little straps here and move them out in front. And I am kind of destroying this. I also looks like I destroyed my uh, poly groups. That's okay. We'll do a quick uh, group by normals, and then <clears throat> let's do this. Do Control Shift. Let's do Geometry Modified Topology Mirror and Weld. Grab this Control Shift X to expand. S to shrink. Control W. There we go. We're back where we started. So let's do a little smooth this out a little bit. Polish by feature. Close circle. I want to maintain my volumes. There we go. And then we'll do a zero mesh same. Give us some better geometry. Now we. I need thickness. This is kind of a complex shape here. So geometry modified topology, delete hidden. I'm going to go through here. We're going to say extrude all polygons. Now if I extrude backwards, you're going to see it's going to flip my normals. It's not a huge deal. Let's go down here to display properties, flip. And then now we have overalls. Turn everything else back on. Oh, we got to go back to our regular append. Overalls body, legs, don't need legs anymore, don't need body anymore. So we have overalls, we have shirt, uh, we need buttons. Um, looks like those can just be, I have a shape like this already. I can just go in here and do a rivet. If you don't have that, you can just grab a cylinder here, quick save. And first let's make sure our overalls are where they're supposed to be. So these need to come down a little bit more. Hold on, a little bit more. Misjudged those quite a bit. Okay, and then these will need to go over his shoulder, like so. And then the shirt, we can take a shirt and kind of fit that inside his body. Okay, so now, uh, again, you can go in here with like a cylinder and just say split mass points. W, we'll go ahead and turn on LSIM so we can put this back. We're going to do a group by normals. Isolate, invert, geometry, modify, topology, delete, hidden. Ah, mirror and weld. Close, convex hole. What did I do? LSIM off, mirror and weld. Close, convex hole. Click and pull and round. Control W, crease PG. Yeah, we can hit D for dynamic. Feel in the flow. Okay, shift C. Mm -hmm -hmm, mm -hmm -hmm. All right, we've got a Mario kind of working. Okay, get caught up. Um, <laughs> I have Bowser Jr. If you look at my YouTube channel, you see Bowser Jr. Thank you. Um, which is pretty close to Bowser. Cool, excellent. Doing great, Morpheus. Thanks for asking. Um, Super Sprite Ace and, and last inch of 2020. That's probably the great 2022 for a long time. You know, there's some cool stuff in there. I like the dynamic symmetry a lot. So now, uh, okay. Now we need to kind of refine this head a little bit. We've got some shapes that I think are working A-OK. -okay. Sorry, I need to cover this up again. Um, but we can do, we can do better. Let's go ahead, it's not terrible. This nose actually, looking from the profile, it kind of dips in quite a bit. So I'm going to say, let's go ahead and just shrink this down. Unmesh, mesh, center, yep. And then polish by features, yep. There we go, something like this. Um, mouth. Head. So, and ears. Yeah, I think I think we're good enough. So all of these head things, I want to get them into one folder. So Control Shift drag to unmatch hash everything, and then Control Shift drag with move multiple. 
and we'll make sure we have everything grabbed that we need. Control shift tap. So we got the nose, the head, we don't need the hat. So all of this stuff, I can just hit control F and say head, heads, heads. And we'll go through here and uh, oh great, it didn't put any of that in there. Hmm. Well, let me see. W head pieces minus K control F yes head okay now we have this so in here on this folder I can go ahead and run uh, an operation now these are all just spheres the only thing I need to worry about is the ears making sure I have polygroups for those and I think I'm okay um, now I could go through here and I could do I probably should do a, a boolean, I can boolean folder or boolean with dynamic subdivision. Um, in this case, I don't know. I'm just going to turn everything else off. We'll just do it this way. I guess we can. Okay, so again, increase PG, hit D for dynamic, a D for dynamic. You don't have to do the dynamic thing. It's just, just in case. And I'm going to kind of squeeze this nose in a little bit here. And then same thing for the neck. Uh, create, we need our polygroups, right? So group by normals, uh, crease PG, D for dynamic. And so now that we have this, let's make sure the ears are in there. Yes, I'm gonna move those ears down just a, a little bit of a natural. I know I'm doing stylized, but a little more natural attachment point here. Um, you know, while I'm thinking about it, yeah, let's do this. So I'm gonna go through this folder and we're gonna say, give me a Boolean with dynamic subdivision. It will pop out this little U-mesh head here. And then I'm going to take the eyeballs here, shift, bent. Uh, we're going to do a subtractive mesh. Do I want it? I don't want it touching the eyes, though. Hmm. Think, Mike, think. OK, here's what we're going to do. Temporarily, we're going to use this head as a subtractive mesh against these eyeballs. So with these showing, we'll turn live boolean on. And now you're going to see it's going to take, I don't need to do that. I'm just going to have this here as reference while I go and scoot this eyeball shape over a little bit and smooth it out. That's fine. Because really, I'm going to use these eyeballs as just a way to kind of chop in. I just didn't want it to really interfere with anything important. OK, fine. Okay, enough of that. So we're gonna take the eyeballs down here. I know that was confusing, just ignore me. So subtractive mesh, I wanna use this to kind of carve in sockets. So, yep, this one here, we'll go ahead and hit, and we'll hit Control D. We'll do a make Boolean mesh here with what's visible. That'll pop out our U mesh here. X symmetry is turned on, zero mesh half, blah, blah, blah. You already know all this, oops. And we'll turn smooth groups down to zero because our group should be already smooth. We are getting kind of complicated in here, so I am going to go in here and help it out just a little bit. Um, you know, these little weird close shapes are really not helping what I'm trying to ask it to do because it it's only going to do what I tell it to do, and what I'm telling it to do is actually really difficult right now. So I'm going to make it a little bit easier on it. And here's the thing. If you ever have a difficult problem, and the computer's just able to do it, what do they need you for, right? Ah, AI's coming for our jobs. Half serial mesh. Okay, um, let's do some work in here. Hold on, shift, smooth this out. Um, I'm gonna do a split uh, bridge two points here. Cut across, alt, drag here, and then we'll make this part of the cheeks. And then this, hmm, this is not ideal. <laughs> Did not think that one through. That's okay. I have a, I have a better version of this. Got to remember that. Because ideally, this would actually all be yellow as well. And I'm actually just, again, this is t super sloppy, but that's okay. Move brush. Oh my gosh. Caps lock off. Keep hitting caps lock for some reason. There we go. So again, yeah, I can just kind of nudge things into place. Just be like, sorry about that Ziri mesh, but this is really what I wanted. I wasn't paying attention. I apologize. And then we'll try Ziri mesh half. 
Again, just give it simpler problems to solve so that it isn't trying to do too much unnecessary work. Mirror and weld, collapse. Try it. We'll try our luck. One more. <sighs> nice. Crease PG if you wanted to, but there's our zero meshed head. Hooray. Back here, append head that we like. This one, don't need. Eyeballs, we might be able to keep around. I don't know. This whole head folder we don't need. Delete all. Okay, so we'll turn everything else back on here. Make that. Turn off, move multiple. Beep, boop, beep. Now, if you did use your eyeballs and you want to keep them around, you can. If you don't, then you can obviously just put in another, oh, what's it called? Put in another sphere because it's stylized and everything is spheres. All right. We'll do a D for dynamic just to kind of show you how it's smooth. We'll turn off any poly paint on these things. That's about right. So hair, let's go ahead and duplicate this off and then say dynamic apply. So we can go through here and we can just paint. Again, standard brush, turn light boolean off, RGB intensity up. Where's my hair go? Right about here. Go in here to solo mode, color. Drop the RGB. Okay. I might fudge this a little bit. Mask. Around the ear. Back of the head. I mean, hell, even for mask region, I might just, I might like 2023. It's so much better, and I need to make a hotkey for this in my custom menu, maybe. Um, again, masking. Analyze region, mask it, fill. All right, uh, for this, let's go ahead and say geometry, delete lower, edge loop mask, b -b 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 border. You don't have to do edge loop mask border, it's just I end up doing that. Yeah, that's fine. Geometry modified poly, delete hidden, zero mesh half. X symmetry starting on, yeah. So we've got hair about where it's supposed to go. And we'll go ahead and go in here and say, I'm going to do an extrude polygroup all. We're going to extrude out a little bit and then also hold down shift on that polygroup and extrude in a little bit. Something like this. So now I think in the back, he's got a party going on. So we're going to move this back a little bit. And we'll go ahead and mask here. Move this back and then a mask invert and we're just gonna pull. Again, we can always zero mesh. So this kind of bubble shape here, boy, that's terrible. Um, we're gonna have a bubble shape here and a bubble shape here. Let's do a quick mask this. Polish by features. Maybe you can just go in here to our clay brush or clay build up or whatever your inflate is fine. So we've got that look here. And we're not doing a ton of sculpting right now, but you get the idea. Go in there and clean that up. Okay, so here, here, here. Let's go in here with our move brush with Accu turned on so we can pull to a point here. Let's do a crease PG dynamic. And you know what? We could even put in a little crease. Crease, crease, edge. All right. Gloves. I've been avoiding these. Um, move this in. The shirt needs to come up a little bit, it looks like, just a tiny bit here. And then, you know what, this is fine. This is fine. 
So I'm going to go through here and let's go ahead and do some of this. Uh, let's do Shift D, make sure that's off. Okay. So where is that glove thing? I'm going to go through here. I'm just going to follow that shirt line essentially. So Alt Tap through here. I'm going to just grab one hand. So X symmetry off, grab it, Control Shift A, delete hidden because we can always move it over. And I'm just going to slice. Knife curve. Same, keep groups. Thank you. Extrude, poly group all. I like to do a little inset, poly group all, legacy. Q mesh, poly group all, hold down shift. Increase PG, increase level of one. Eh, you probably don't even need that. That's a little weak sauce. Uh, let's make that a little thicker. Scale. Where is it? There it is. Did I not say scale? Come on. That was dumber than it needed to be. Okay, that was on me though. Okay, so shirt, gloves, gloves, mirror and weld, X on the tree on, hat, fits, head, Duplicate this off. Dynamic. Increase PG. Apply. Control D one more time. Just for the heck of it. Solo mode. Standard brush. RGB on. Put that module right on there. Mask. Here. Right on. Uh, delete lower. Edge, you guys got to be bored by this by now. <sighs> Edge of the mass border. Isolate it. Delete hidden. Um, duplicate this one off. Go through here. Let's control D to subdivide. Control D to subdivide. Mask. Yeah, I got I to gotta do a hotkey for that region. Because it's so useful. I right, just got to go down here. Analyze it. Analyze. Wait. Analyze. Fill. Okay. Sharpen. Um, you know what? We'll just hit Control W. Delete hidden. Wait. What? Oh. Delete lower. Delete hidden. Polish by features. Zero mesh. Guess what? Zero mesh half. Half. <sighs> Half, half. Let's pull out to some corners here. Okay, and we'll do a bridge. Bridge, edges. You need to stay stuck here. Thank ya. Move. Control W. Mirror and weld. Collapse. This is super boring, right? I'm not wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Sometimes CG is boring. Let's do a split. Sorry, just cleaning up some geo. Delete. You. You. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right, we got an M. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Q mesh, probably your ball. Pull it out. Pull it back just a little bit. <gasps> what? 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 You tricky delete. Okay, Q mesh out a little bit, in a little bit too. Um, I'm gonna run a crease tolerance underneath your geometry crease menu. So when I turn on dynamic, it keeps my edges nice and crispy. And then all I can just do a polish by feature, close circle, maintainer volumes. Maybe on this one, we'll do like a crease level of one, smooth subdiv of two. And then, of course, we need our little 
circle. Um, we can just wrap to form this type of thing, but hey, while we're in here, zero mesh half, because I like doing it so much. Half, 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 half. Q mesh, polygroup ball. A little bit of thickness out, a little bit of thickness in. Now we gotta move our M out. Okay, everything's on. Hey y'all, we just made a Mario in an hour. Okay, um, how do you create IDS like normals displacement for your character in ZBrush? You bake it um, down. Well, you can find it in here, normals and displacement. You can also go in here to Z plugin, multimap exporter. You can look those terms up, that'll get you started. Yeah, native max support in 2023. Cool. Fill region helps. Um, open circle and closed circle, good question. So if I was to go and smooth this shirt out with my dynamic, like I wanna crease or um, do a polish by features, closed circle will maintain my volume. So it'll polish my lines, but it'll kind of make sure that my volume, you know, think of a volume as like a balloon that's puffing up a shape. It'll keep that intact. The open circle will polish the heck out of stuff, but you'll also lose your volumes. So they're both useful. I use both of them, but um, just depends on the situation. Okay, so if we won't, oh, we need to put this on the other side. Uh, mirror and wheel across the X. So now normally what I would tell you is go through here and do a Z plugin, transpose master, T pose mesh, uh, and then just start posing this guy. Cause what we're gonna do, I told you this, well, maybe I didn't tell you. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna do a mashup because I missed a month. So we're gonna do a um, Mario Last of Us. Um, so we'll get that figured out. Now I can go in here and do, uh, there's a bunch of different ways you can pose things. I just look up ZBrush posing on the internet. Um, I'm contemplating, damn it, there's a really, do I do this or not? It'll be fun. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. I won't get in trouble. I'm going to do this in a suboptimal way. And that's all I'm going to say about it. So here, uh, transpose master, we can go in here to T pose mesh. That'll take all of your objects and put them into one. Um, temporarily and then as you go through here and move these shapes around you can mask and whatever you need to do uh, to pose um, and I guess we can just do it ah, should I go in there I don't know if I should okay let's just do this control shift uh, I want to pose this guy out um, first I'm gonna Google like are you a jump pose there we go something like this classic right so control shift, grab everything here. Control shift A, minus the shirt, mask and invert, move. And we'll put this head up here. And we'll go ahead and rotate his whole body back here. And then, you know, again, from his waist, control drag here, control tap, invert. It is just kind of a lot of masking. Let's go ahead and turn on X symmetry. Go ahead and bend his body back a little bit here, and then his right leg out. We'll go ahead and say you, oops, turn X symmetry off now. Bend this leg way up. And we'll, we'll, get, we'll get in there and do our correctives. Don't you worry. And then from the side here, rotate this back. Eh, maybe not that much. Got his little leg kicked out here. Boy, he really kicks that leg out. Um, <laughs> hold on. Ugh. Mega deformations. Um, and then rotate it back. Just a little bit. Uh, 
mask and invert. So this is the, yeah, this will be fine. This will be fine. I'll, I'll figure out if I need to talk about that other stuff. It's cool, but this will work for our purposes. So go through here, invert, blur, reset your gizmo somewhere in this area, and we'll kick this back a little bit. So from this pose here, yeah, leg goes out and then bends back just a little bit here. And then maybe this little foot, oh, kind of does a little point. And then this arm goes way up. Now you can hold down control and drag. And again, it's gonna follow that geometry. And then we just need to go in here and hold down control alt and unmask this arm. Reposition this. Sorry, it seems like a really boring live stream today. Not that they're ever exciting necessarily, but like this one especially just seems very utilitarian. Um, oh, you know what we need to do? Damn, I should have done this earlier. Hmm. I want to take his entire upper body. You always want to start from the hips out for the exact reason problems I'm going to be running into now, which is we want to kind of like twist his body this way a little bit because we want to see a little bit more of his arms, but now it's a pain to go in here and get the right selections. So again, just be careful. Start from the hips, get all that where you need it to, and then everything will fall into place. Okay, so control drag down, control alt for this arm. Position this, rotate up, big, big, big swing there. Oh, and then the fist too. Uh, that would be, yeah, that would be easier a different way, but I'm not gonna do it. Um, okay, and then for the other arm, we'll go ahead and move this back. Should be a little bit, this be the easiest move. Position inside, rotate it back a little bit here. Maybe give him a little bend in that elbow. And then for fists, I'm probably just gonna just do one fist here uh, and duplicate it over. And I don't need to be in this mode to do this. So good enough. If you want to do your correct, a little bit of your corrective now while everything's kind of in here, you can, or you can do it piecemeal once you send it back over. So once we're good to go, we can say T pose to sub T. That'll go over here and put all of these things over into that pose. Yay. All right, so I'm gonna take his shirt here and fix that first. And then his pants here, we'll go through and we'll fix <laughs> this mess. And if you are running into trouble, because I mean, this is not like we did a whole ton of sculpting or anything. So if you're running into trouble with thicknesses or something like, like your inside um, geometry is competing with your outside geometry, we can just recreate that. I'll show you how. So here, and then we'll just, Ease that back, there we go, that looks a little nicer. And then this, when you kick your leg back, your booty is gonna kinda go out a little bit too. The muscle's gonna kinda punch on itself there. And here it'll stretch. Nice, okay, shirt. You're again, just doing a tiny bit of cleanup work. And also we can turn off X symmetry now on all of our subtools, because no longer relevant, smooth. You can also, there's a smooth option in your, so for example, if I'm in here and I'm like, ah, I just wanna smooth, but I wanna keep my polygroups there, um, underneath your brush here, underneath the smooth brush modifiers, you do have a weighted smooth mode. If you set it to uh, six, that's groups border. It's also in here, if you hit the comma key, go to brush, smooth, oh. I'm like, God, I'm getting really tired all of a sudden. I haven't had my coffee yet. There we go. 
Do, 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 do. So uh, somewhere in here is like smooth groups. There it is, boom, smooth groups. So you can use either one of those methods, do the same thing. But I'm gonna go down here and we'll set the weighted smooth mode. Hold down shift, set it to six. So now when I smooth, it will, ah, this is very low res, but it'll kind of keep your polygroups intact um, or just smooth along them, just in case that's interesting to you. We'll put this back down to weighted smooth out of one, which is smooth stronger, which is why you'll see me come in here and drop my Z intensity down while I work often. Um, Shifty. Let's go ahead and say control shift tap. Invert. Hold on. I chug my coffee. Um, control tab W and we'll kind of turn off X symmetry again. Like I see it. All right, we'll just kind of hold on. Just want to ease this down a little bit to smooth it. <laughs> we are doing some gross work here, folks, but it's a live stream. What do you expect? So stick that neck in there, go in there, sculpt his face, whatever. But I don't need to sculpt his face because we're doing a Last of Us mashup. So what's going to happen is quick save, append, cube. Give him a little bit of a backdrop here. So now, I need my new reference using Quadro Open Last of Us. I won't do any spoilers, but give it a sec. I just need to open up a bit of reference. Open. Oops. Streaming Mario World. Again, um, kind of no spoilers. I don't want to show it, but there is one scene where there's a fungus and a person and a wall. So I'm going to do that with this. And we're going to tell a little story visually because we're visual storytellers, are we not? He's going to be kind of plastered fungus style against this wall and maybe there will be a little question box here and then some fungus and some other fun stuff. And then he'll be basically a mummified skeleton looking thing with his little Mario clothes on. Sound good? So let's go into load tool here because I've done quite a bit in my in the past a bunch of Mario stuff. Let's see if I can steal some things. Um, yeah, so here's Bowser Jr. we've made before, the little bullet guy. These are all in my live streams from years past. Um, we don't have the little question box. That's really all I wanted. I don't know that, I mean, we could have some of this stuff kind of strewn about. We kind of, you know, it's post apocalyptic, so maybe just laying on the ground um, there. Are these? Oh, yeah, okay. So we can check this out. Let's go in here to Z plugin, Subtool Master. And if I want to steal entire folders, which in this case I do, then go in here and say, what are we, bullet bill, so to master, copy folder, go back to this one, paste folder, cool, and then we don't, I don't think we'll need this. And I don't think we'll need this because poor bullet bill. If we go here and we say transpose set, that'll make it so we're just transposing this. And then this guy can just be, I don't know, off to the side. Maybe we'll use that. Maybe we won't. Um, ba bomb. One more time, just real quick. Copy folder paste folder. Same deal with this one. Maybe we'll keep it, maybe we won't, but we can transpose set so that he can be doing his thing. Let's go down mesh mesh center on 
Ba -bum. Oh, he was masked. Undo. Actually, focus shift. Yeah, focus shift negative 100 here. Transpose set. Hmm. Maybe he wasn't. That was weird. Okay. Uh, now I do need that question box. I know I have one. Hold on. Load tool. Star thing. Question box. Hey. Now, question. No pun intended. Should I have it just painted on, or should I have it actually in extruded? If I do extruded, that's going to be a little trickier. Um, I mean, I guess I can show y'all. So hey, we'll do a W. Nope. Um, okay, we're going to do a mirror. What direction are we looking at? Z forward. Nice job, Pab. So mirror in the Z direction to flip these around, because I want to do. Back in the day when I first was modeling these, I you know like to do a bunch of fancy beveling and putting stuff in. I don't do that anymore. Same thing for this box here. Instead of doing like this dynamic coverage Q grid stuff, just turn it off. This thing just flat. This thing, turn it off. No Q grid, no smooth. Uh, and I do want again if I'm going to Z remesh this, I want all my poly groups intact. So I'm going to go through here group by normals, drop that max angle down so we're picking up every single edge change as its own polygroup. That'll come in handy. Um, and in fact, let's go in here to crease all, and I am going to do a smooth subdiv of two just to give it more geometry when I do my dynamic subdivision. And in fact, let's do this. Insert multiple edge loops, keep polygroup. I'm going to go through here and just give myself some resolution. Okay, um, so we've got this dynamic, this one here. We'll say crease all, we'll do a smooth subdiv of one. And then this one here, dynamic smooth subdiv of three or two is fine. Okay, so now let's turn on live boolean. Let's see the result we're gonna get. These are punched in, let's punch them in a little further. They have their own poly groups. This is gonna be embossed on it. So now go through here, <laughs> dynamic subdivision, make boolean mesh. Um, several warnings, no, why? Oh, that was just flush on there. Okay, that, that, that tracks. Delete all. I can fix that. So here, I need to make sure... Let's get rid of these start groups. Um, I'm going to make this fatter. We're going to push this in so it actually interacts with the object there. And so now if we go through here, then we do a make boolean mesh. Stop giving me warnings. Floor off. What is it doing? I don't understand. Control W. Control Shift. Alt Shift. Alt Shift. Hmm. I don't know. Don't feel like troubleshooting that. So now we have this selected. We'll do half, depth size down to zero, keep groups, move groups down to zero. And we'll give ourselves an embossed question mark. Oh, and sometimes it will do this, where it's like, oh, I decided to make these the same polygroup. Nope. I do not. Control W. And we may need to do same or double. That's not terrible. Fix that a little bit. Okay. Crease PG, crease level of one, smooth so div of two or something. Now we've got a little embossed question mark with little holes built into it. We can go through there and modify those as needed. But now we can go back to our working file. We don't need to do this. Delete all. Here's what we're looking at. Append question box. You rotate move scale push it in all right so he's going to be reaching for that question box but then he got blasted by some fungus so how much time we got 
We got 30 minutes. Let's talk a little bit about fungus. Among us. Okay, let me get cut up. Um, yes, yes, yes. How to use crease using the select lasso tool. Um, I think so. So if you have a control shift, select lasso, you can just isolate what you want to have creased, and then you just go into geometry crease, and then that'll crease any open edges that you have on that selection. That might be what you're talking about. Oh, cool. Um. <laughs> um, cool. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. My, oh, yeah. We're doing a CGMA class right now. We just did our live QA yesterday. <laughs> That's right, Justin. I uh, all my mistakes are done on purpose. I sneak them in there just to provide you extra information. <laughs> uh. Although sometimes I'll back myself to a corner that I can't get out of. That's happened embarrassingly a number of times. Um, Z modeler action inset with some settings legacy um, to create a bevel. Yes. So it's basically, and the reason I do that, um, good catch. So if I go through here and we have a cube, ah, that's why I do a quick save. Wait for it. I mean, it, here's the thing. It is saving the file. It's saving the Z tool and it's saving the Z project. So again, you're not losing anything. You just got to hit the comma key, go into Z projects or the quick save section and you're good to go. <sighs> not a huge deal. Although I will say this doesn't seem to be easy. Mac have gray, save the startup material. Isn't saving my startup material. Thought they were going to fix that in 2023.0.1, but they didn't. Uh, so back up here, we'll just grab our recovery, 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 recovery. Quick save, quick save. And we don't need our timeline or anything. We're past that. So I got a little scene here. And I was going to go say, hey, let's talk about something else real quick. No big deal. Make Polymesh 3D. If you're going to, um, you know, it's a game dev thing maybe, but I want to go through here and I want to Q mesh polygroup ball and pull this out. And I want to bake this as a normal map. Um, it's going to do a horrible job. See, it's like, cause again, if it's just, there's just not enough info information there. Um, boy, I botched the hell out of that. I, might, I sculpted it a little bit. Um, so anyway, go through here and then I just pull this straight out. And then if I go to bake this off or something, also, if you just view it from a distance, it just kind of, there's not much to it, right? There's not enough meat there to view it from a distance. Or if you go to bake this off, you know, from this normal and you just bake it, you're going to get a thin little crappy baked result. So that's why we do inset polygroup ball. I do legacy. You don't have to do legacy. Equidistance is good too, but sometimes it'll leave little triangles just to make things equidistant. So inset polygroup ball legacy is usually fine. Pull this in a little bit and then Q mesh. Hold down shift as you pull this one out. And now you got a nice big chunky bevel that you can read from a distance. And if you bake it out, you got something to chew on. You got a normal map that's gonna, got something to grab, got something to show you. Anyway, that's that's why I do that. Um, oh, sorry about that. I mean, you don't need, I mean, you can take the class, I don't know. It's, it's basically just the, um, what is it? It's the same videos that's on my Gumroad. Um, I forget what they're called. ZBrush for concept and ideation. It's like 300 videos. I need to update them for 2023 or the end of 2022 and then 2023 actually. Um, they're on they're on Gumroad somewhere. You can just buy them. And that's that's basically all the class is, is those videos. And then of course, you know, you get my personal feedback throughout the week and stuff. But eh, if you don't need to hear me talk more than I already do, you don't need to. Don't worry about it. Okay, it's getting warm in here now that I got coffee in me. <laughs> you crashed, you crashed my ZBrush. I knew it. It was your comment. Um, crease, yes, okay. Sorry, getting cut up. Control edge, uh, control shift alt, clicking on an edge while using the select lasso tool creates a single edge. Control shift alt and clicking on an edge, let's see. Control shift alt, click. Is it this? Because I know you can do like select lasso. So control shift alt while clicking on an edge will do a um, 
like a edge crease, just kind of a single edge crease. If you needed to, you could say if you needed to do a poly loop, well, you could do this and invert it. And then again, just run that crease here. Um, that seems really slow to me. What I would do is go in here, hover over a point, and then, I mean, again, if you want to, if it's easy, just control shift and click and, oop, um, control shift alt click and then crease the edges. However, a little faster, go in here and say, I say faster, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, crease, shortest path, and then you can go through here. Boom, 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 oops, boom, 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 boom. And then I'll just cut, cut through. Um, speaking of, that comes in real handy when you're doing the 2023. There we go. Hush. Uh, this one, UV unwrap, cut your seams based on creasing. So now you can use, you can go through here. In fact, we can just do this real quick. That might be a fun exercise. Oop, paste that. Um, yeah, so let's say we want to UV our uh, overalls here. So if I go through, you can go in here, old, not the old way, but still a useful way is um, Z plugin, UV master. You always want to work on a clone. Even, so if we had subdivision history, which we don't, but we could, we'll hit control D and we'll do a little bit of sculpting just to say, hey, we're, we got details. Uh, go in here and say work on clone. That'll dump it out to its lowest subdivision level. And then we can say, uh, we can use polygroups. It's not symmetrical. Um, yeah, polygroups should work fine. I think those will come in handy. And then uh, we can go through here and we can say flatten. Uh, oops, sorry, unwrap and then flatten. And then in here you can say control tap and move your shells around or whatever you want to do. Um, but if I go out of this mode and we say check seams, uh, we got a seam right along the, the front and the back, right? So if we want to control where our seams go, you can go in here to enable control painting. You can literally tell it, I want to protect the front of the leg and I want to attract the inside. I want to just put the seam right down the inside of these legs, right? So then I can try to unwrap and then flatten again. And hey, look, it worked. So hey, that's one way you could do it. However, you can also now in 2023, let's do this. So even with subdivision history, you can drop down to subdivision level one. We can go through here into our UVs. And now we have uh, unwrap, auto seams, creased edges, symmetry. So we can go through here. I'm going to do a quick crease PG because I do want seams where my polygroups are. So that's easy. And then just like we did before, if I wanted to be sliced down the inside of the leg, I can go through here and again, crease shortest path. I want to go from you whoop, all the way to you. And then, you know what, just down the middle too. here across to here. And then we want to go from here all the way down here. So now that will be where my seams are. So then we can unwrap with our creased edges. Let's do bump down to zero, morph UV. And now those will be your UVs along there, just in case you need that functionality. Ta -da. Um. Hmm. Oh yeah, slime bridge, we can use that too. Um. Okay, could you delete some of the tools that are there on the right if you want to click that R and delete everything. We just want to delete certain tools. Okay, so how do you delete some of the tools that are there on the right if you don't want to click R and delete everything? Just delete certain ones. Um, so this one doesn't really delete anything. It just clears it out. Same thing if you're over here in your brushes and you got a bunch of brushes you've been using, you just hit R. It doesn't delete them. It just clears them out of your quick selection, basically. Um, so if you want to bring any of these back, like the question box, just select it select it and then now they'll pop back up in your quick select section if that makes sense if that's the question if i understand correctly is what i should say ah crease function yeah cool um yes yeah, slime braids let's do it uh, mask entire mesh to local sub d will obliterate all the triangles that it can in a different way than the actual quadrangle button in 2020. Okay, awesome. Thank you. I'll check that out. Oh, also Sculptress Pro. We should use, we'll use that. We'll use some of that too. Okay. Um, I work on, I work with a tablet, except when uh, I need to do very, very specific selections in 
uh, with Z modeler, <laughs> which I did earlier. Uh, so we're gonna look up, okay, I'm gonna, I do have a, a document on some old creature brushes I used to use. Brushes, yeah, we're gonna dig through some of these. It's been a while since I've done creature work, y'all. You excited? Because I'm kind of terrified. So we have our backdrop here. So we want to put some um, stuff on here. So I did a little bit of rudimentary research back on my channel to remember how mesh balloon and mesh, all this mesh stuff works. So if you go through here, like mesh balloon, you can go through. First thing I always like to do is go into my stroke menu and say lazy mouse off. So that way I can go through here, I can hold down shift and we can combine these things. So this is a really good way to kind of just get some goopy stuff going. And of course you also do have mesh splat. So we can go through here and again, let's turn off a uh, lazy mouse here. So you can go through and you can just splat some stuff on there and we can go through here and inflate that up. So get some really nice gross things going. Um, and then if we want to just do things folded over stuff, so you have extrude, you know, mesh extrude, it's pretty self-explanatory. Ah, get rid of that lazy mouth. Ugh. Okay, so mesh extrude here, and if we want to make that thicker, that is, if I remember correctly, underneath modifiers, strength multiplier. Oh, and our on once contiguous. Really? Yeah. Okay, strength multiplier makes that thicker. Um, and then also underneath here, there is some mass mesh, mask mesh modifiers where you can control a bevel and stuff like that. Um, and then the mesh, proje mesh project basically has, I'm going through my stuff now. Uh, what is that depth set to continuous Z as opposed to once Z? So once Z it's gonna, that's so why I changed this. Let's grab that picker over here. So for mesh project continuous Z, if I go through here and I just kind of oh, get rid of that control Lazy mouse, no more. So if I go through here and I wanna just drape mesh across some stuff, um, having continuous Z on is how you'd wanna do that. If you wanna just make a shape based on where you click first, that would be once Z. So now I can go through and make that shape. And again, it samples that space and then just makes a shape. That's the basics of all that. <clears throat> and then on top of that, let's go ahead and dump some of these off. So control shift and we'll say split hidden. And we got this one. Let's play around with this one. That's a cool shape. This one's a neat shape. And uh, these ones we can just delete. Blah, blah. Okay, so we've got this mesh. So let's talk a little bit about sculpting some nasty fungus stuff. And there's a ton of ways to do this. I got my reference image. Again, no spoilers, but I'm just gonna kind of sneak this into the side here. Can you see? Can you see? So we're just gonna have that up as I'm trying to think interesting ways to, um, okay, don't look, okay. So uh, we got a shape and it's kind of bubbly on the edges. We do have some bubbly brushes. So the blob brush is pretty cool. You can go through here and you can just kind of use this to kind of blob up your edges. If you want to work in Dynamesh, you can. You can also go in here to Sculptures Pro and that'll kind of subdivide as you work. You can see here as we're working um, and then also in your stroke menu, you have some Sculptures Pro settings in here. A new thing that they have in 2023 is a subdivide size. You can go through here and choose. So this will be a smaller subdivide size, which means smaller uh, geometry, which means higher resolution. And then so you can go through here and you can pick. So now this one, uh, wait, turn adaptive size off, sample. There you go. And now your resolution will match that or go through here, take this one and now it'll match that resolution. FYI. So now we've got some nice blobby little edges coming in here. Look at that. Ah, no, a fungus. So we've got that. Um, what else can we do? And that's it. No, we got, we got more. Uh, we got clay built. We got, oh, one that I do like, if you want to do a little bit more controlled, uh, where's it at? Miscellaneous. Here's a spherical. So you can go through it. We still have Sculptures Pro turned on. Um, again, you don't have to have that on if you just want to use the existing geometry. You just got to make sure you have enough. Um, enough. Enough. So here you can go through here and you can like just basically just make a sphere out of something. So if you just want to kind of pull up. Oh, also, back face masking. If you don't want to pull through the object, if you have a very thin object, go in here to brush, auto masking back face masking on and then that way it'll leave your back side alone. Anything that you can't see or the camera can't see, I should say, 
um, your brush won't see. So that's another cool one. Let's go through my creature brushes real quick. Again, I'm just kind of looking through this document, going through some old examples here. Spherical for nodules, form brush instead of inflate. Let's try that. So BF, form soft, crank that intensity up because I think it's a pretty soft brush. Let's go ahead and turn Sculptors Pro back on. Yeah, so instead of inflating, you can go through here and you can kind of do push down and then let go. You can get some really nice um, brainy kind of results. Yeah, look at that. Oh my gosh, it's going to get me. Um, cool. Um, move two, we don't need to do that. Nudge, we don't need to do that. Scales, we don't need to do scales. This one kind of is fun. BS, what's it called? Spiral. So if you just need to go through here, we'll turn off Sculptors Pro. So you can go through here and you can kind of twist things around. You can hold down Alt and twist it the other way. So sometimes that can come in handy just trying to get some nice variations in your, you know, kind of having these things like kind of pull or kind of swoop into an area. You can do this and then just continue to kind of build up in some areas here. Brush tracks, trails, M2. Oh, well, there's, a, there's some other stuff coming, believe me. Just give me a second. There's some stuff we need to talk about. I'm just kind of going over them all. Uh, so brush tracks. Oh, man, it's been a while since I've done this. Again, creatures, man. It's been a long time. Tracks M2. We'll go ahead and turn Sculptors Pro back on. And I think this one like pulls out. Oh, no. Oh, that's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a paintbrush. However, we can use it as a sculpting brush. So we can go through here. And let's crank that Z intensity up. There we go. So now, yeah, those those kind of um, little little pulled out edges that you can you sometimes see in some of the reference, you can use this to kind of go through, and it kind of follows the surface normal. So you can kind of do like layered, little weird layered kind of effects like that. So that's a cool one. We'll keep that in our back pocket. And. Uh, bleh. Uh, that's enough. That's enough to work with, and there's and your usual brushes too. However, the real hot stuff is B S snake curve. So if we want to do that clicker type look, we can go through here, or at least part of it. We can go through here, and we can grab, and then we can pull, and that'll actually take this and start swirling it around. So you can okay. If you want to know more about this, this is what I had to do last night. Kind of embarrassing, but it is what it is. I don't remember everything. It is underneath ZBrush. Again, if you, if it's a little bit easier, I'll go ahead and copy this again. So you're looking for videos, two places. You can go to my ArtStation page, you can go to my YouTube page. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to look on my ArtStation page and find just the section of what's new. And so 2021, if you can remember which sections it's on, you can just click in here. Again, there's more goodies in here, but you can go through here and you can say, um, what's new? What's new? We can just, I mean, you can go through here, you can do searches, but we can also just kind of scroll down because I think all of this stuff was, yes. So extrude profile brushes right here, right next to our handy snake curve brushes. Boom. And if you, of course, you want to watch this on YouTube, just click here. So that's just another way to navigate. So snake curve brushes, check this out. There's more information there. Basically how it works, if I remember correctly, is you can go through here and again you're just making a curve and you can there's a bunch of other brushes on here that can also use curves like brush like some of the deco curve drag brushes so you just take this and you can just drag like a let me find another spot here you curve there you go so now we've got an arrow in here as an alpha you can put in uh, any alpha you want put in a star drag that curve out it'll drag that star across that curve and then you can i thought you could reposition the curve. Am I crazy? Turn this off. There we go. I guess you can't have Sculptures Pro on if you want to update the curve, but you can go through and okay. I'm doing a terrible job demoing that. But anyway, you get the idea. So back here, brush, snake, curve. There's one, two, four, and five. Um, four is a good one. See how like, so these ones just kind of pull out. So let me show you how that works. It says, hey, turn on Sculptures Pro, dummy. And then over here underneath your stroke, you have a, is it stroke or is it brush? Let's find out. Let's learn along with me. 
curve. We have a curve in here. We also have a curve and stroke under intensity, right? What am I thinking of? Oh, there it is. So um, curve modifiers, you have a curve fall off. It goes from left to right. If we do snake curve two, it's got the little bump in the middle. So what that basically tells us is when we drag out this curve and then we pull on this curve, because we have a bump in the middle of that curve, when I pull out, it's going to have a bump. That's what's gonna control that shape. So if we go back here to snake curve and we pull, it'll just pull from one side. If we go through here and we flip horizontally that curve, it'll pull from the other side. And then here, if I remember correctly, so this one, the one that has like the crazy shapes, you're gonna see as I'm pulling this one, I mean, it generally go, I mean, you can get in here and get wild and crazy with your mouse movements and, and force it to do that, but it generally stays with that shape as you pull up if you're generally careful. However, if we go in here and we grab our snake curve four as we pull up, it's gonna start introducing a lot of undulation as it grows through the mesh. Um, where that's coming in is down here under curve direction, position projection, direction projection. If we crank that up, I think it's position, it'll start going nuts. If we change this down to zero, it'll behave, oh, maybe it's this one, direction. I don't know. One of these, I think, controls how wacky it gets. Um, but you can see how useful this can be um, for doing that type of stuff. And again, you can just redraw your curve and you can pull out from this direction. You can redraw your curve and pull out from this direction and start getting some really zany uh, fungus stuff going, right? So there's that. Uh, so you can you can start doing this and then we'll go back in here. If I want, again, I want a little bit more control. Maybe we'll just use, what's this one, snake curve five? Oh, that one just goes nuts. We'll go back here to like snake curve one. And you know what, we'll reset this. So now as I pull this out, again, it's fairly controlled and then you can just go in here and just kind of enhance. Let's make our brush size a little smaller so as we pull, the geometry is a little finer. There we go. And then through here, we'll grab this little piece and we'll kind of pull up. And we'll grab this little piece. And then if we want to put little knobs on the end, right? Um, that would be a matter of, maybe blob might be a good, brush for that. We'll go back in here to blob. And there's other brushes too, like little concrete brushes and stuff like that, but, or the spherical brush, but this blob seems to work just fine. You know, it's kind of like a little bit of an inflate brush too. So just be a little, okay, if you need an inflate, give yourself a little more meat to chew on. Just go through here and inflate this out a little bit like so, and then go back into your B, B, L, bobble. Remember bobble for blob, blobble. There we go, so there's that. However, um, there's also, if you just need to make shapes, you can go through here. I mean, obviously you can go through and you can be like, hey, just use your standard brush or whatever and just type in these little vine shapes. So the one we did earlier, which was brush form, I think form did a pretty good job. Form soft, of kind of going through here and giving you some nice kind of shapes you can use to kind of get that that stuff going. Uh, but if you needed to travel across objects, one easy way to do that, a couple of easy ways to do that. Append a sphere. Go in here to the sphere. Where is my sphere? It's hidden in my objects. It's just kind of sitting in space. Totally fine. I'm just going to leave it there. But we can go down here now to Z sketch, go in here to edit sketch, and now it's going to switch. Instead of doing like an armature where you're building a Z sphere armature, you can go through here and you just start painting. Um, uh, edit sketch. You can go through here and you just start kind of painting in little Z spheres and that'll travel over everything. So here it'll kind of travel up and around and over and all this kind of stuff. And you can turn this into a unified skin and this will give you all sorts of fun ways to kind of get some veiny stuff going. Also, IMM brushes obviously, right? So we'll go through here, we'll go say a unified skin preview. Um, Okay, this is where we're gonna run into trouble. Preview, okay, up that resolution so you get um, those shapes. And then we wanna say make unified skin. That's gonna put out a skin z-sphere here. I'm going to append it into our scene. So we have the real geometry here. This is just a z-sphere. If I hit A to go out of unified skin mode, again, it's just z-spheres. You can go through here and you can hold down Alt. Um, 
you can paint over, you can hold down shift to smooth transitions between objects. There's a lot of really fun, cool stuff you can do with Z-Spheres. If you want to check those out on any of these projects, demo projects, Z-Sketch Critter, you can go check that out. Um, but if we don't need Z-Spheres in our scene anymore, get rid of it. So now we have that, and then of course IMM brushes. If you go in here to BC, unfortunately for me, if I say like Brush Curve 2, we'll go ahead and turn off Sculptures Pro, uh, same deal. Let's go into our snap stroke settings, stroke, curve mode, bend, start, bend, end, snap, right? And then if we go through here and we try and use it, um, it doesn't really follow the surface that well. I'm trying to remember why, but this, this can totally work too. You can just tap off and then just continue drawing and tap off and continue drawing and then you can just kind of mush all this stuff together or boolean in or whatever. Um, however, I usually like to go in here and go out of edit mode, switch, and I don't need to save any of this, so if we crash, no big deal. Um, let's start with a cylinder here, edit. Don't make, make polymesh 3D because we need to go in here to initialize. We'll drop this down very low to like 8 and 4. Again, just something very simple. Now we can say make polymesh 3D. We'll go in here and say insert multiple edge loops, keep polygroup. There we go. Three even things. Let's go ahead and say we're going to cap the top, control W, the bottom, control W, B. Let's make these a little bit more even. B, create insert mesh new. So now we have an insert mesh brush. But what we really want is to go over here to stroke, turn on curve mode, go down here to our brush settings and say modifiers, weld points, maybe a little stretch, maybe a little curve res. So as we go through here, That'll give us, now this one will snap. This one will behave as I expect it to. If you wanna save this one, go in here to brush, select icon, yay, save as. If I ever wanna pull this in again, we'll go into ZBrush 2023, ZBrushes, underscore IMM, and we'll just call this Simple Path. Okay, so now, go back in here. And now we can use an IMM brush to go through here and again, just kind of follow along. Let's tap S to drop this in, our draw size in. And it's sitting right on the surface, which may be exactly what we want. Uh, if you want it to embed itself a little bit more underneath brush depth, you can just take this and just drop that embed down and we can actually just tap to update this. Um, and there you go. So now you can use this as kind of a way to kind of have a little bit more control. Uh, of course, you can also go in here to B, like extrude profile. So brush alpha, wait, brush extrude profile is a fun one. You can go in here to M. In our case, you know, you can use any shape. Again, look up extrude profile on the internet. It'll give you more information. But here's like, we can choose a shape. Uh, the first thing I would do for, in our, for our purposes is go down here to stroke and then turn off repel strength because we don't want it to pop out and back down we just wanted to lay flat on our surface so there we go oh and we can also do thick to thin um, which we could do with our other brush too so simple path you're going to see it's just one continuous thing uh going is it intensity no size there we go so now by default it's going to go thin to thick which probably feels a little weird so go in here and say flip horizontal and then now when you draw out it'll go thick to thin there we go very nice. Ta-da. Um, same thing with extrude profile. So that's what that reminded me of. So again, choose any shape here. And then now as you use this one, it'll go through. And you can, again, you can swap out these shapes on the fly. As long as this is selected, you can go through and, you know, choose any shape that you want. There's also a brush alpha extrude. I don't like that one as much because I can't control the geo as exactly. Am I a control freak? Yeah, curve alphas. Give those a shot too. Um, was there something else before I had to go? You get the idea. So next stream, I'm gonna stream on my channel, Mario, Mummified, Splatter Fungus, Little Scene, Twofer. This is the, the, the clickbait Hey, Mario's popular right now. Last of Us is popular right now. What could be better than both of them mashed up in a really weird, disgusting way? Mm. Speaking of vines, there's a vine brush. So, oh, another thing too. So if you ever go in here to like brush, 
BI brush insert IMM curve brush, and then you're like, oh, I want to use a bike chain. Go through here and draw out a bike chain and obviously make your brush size bigger. Um, curve brushes is another thing too, if you're ever wondering like, what are you talking about? That's another really easy search. You don't have to go on my channel, use the internet. You don't have to use my channel. I just, this is where I go because <laughs> I know I recorded it. Um, type in like IMM curve and that will give you a bunch of curve brush stuff you can go and check out. And curves helper is another cool one. All sorts of cool stuff. Um, but the whole point of this is you can go through here and add a curve and then go in here Again, brush insert, hit M, and you can update it. So if you want to turn this into a bracelet, you can. Um, so you can get really specific with the type of stuff you draw out. If you ever needed to, make your own custom brushes. What else was I going to talk about? That seemed like there was something else. Let's go back here. Brush, simple path. Tap to update this. Um, we'll turn size off and brush size down. So you can also use, if we tap off, like Curves Helper, if you look that up, we'll do a split mass points here. Um, we can do a group by normals, whoop, group by normals up max angle. There we go. I'm just going to take this one here, delete hidden. So if I ever want to like put more curves down this path for some reason, or I don't know, all sorts of stuff you can do. We'll go in here to poly group, poly loop. So you, 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 and then we'll go in here to frame our polygroup border, and then we'll do brush, extrude, profile, M, hair, tap, and now we've got this kind of just being passed down, so tap off to delete. If you can't tap off to delete, go in here to curve functions, delete. And then we can say uh, visibility hide point, invert that, split hidden. Um, now, if you wanted it to helix, another thing you can do, I have a quick just, um, cylinder that I can drop in. I'm going to do a split mass points. And again, back to what we did before, bend arc. Uh, nope. Bend curve. We'll make this into a little noodle. We'll go through here and we'll add some resolution here. So we can go through and as we're bending, of course we can bend this into any shape we'd like. Very useful. And the other cool thing about this too is you can go through here and you can twist. So this long one here, you can kind of helix down um, as it goes, well, he looks the other way, I guess. I don't know. Something like this. So now we can go through here again. Um, group by normals, bending all the way up. There we go. So now we just again, we just need the pink. Delete hidden. Now we have a path here. You, and we just want to do two. We can just grab these two. Delete hidden. Frame, whatever. Beep, boop beep, bop, and there you got the little thing, and then you can, okay, time to go to work, everybody, hope you had fun um, watching this back, everybody, all the YouTube commenters, I hope you had fun watching this back at 0.25x speed, <laughs> okay, there we go, Geometry Mod Topology, Delete Hidden, and go and make your weirdo vines, oh, that was the thing I was going to bring, uh, BI Brush Insert IMM Curve M, Vine, you can actually step through randomly different um, meshes. So basically this one's, again, look up Vine Brush, ZBrush Vine Brush. That's stepping through these four randomly doo -doo 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 -doo, and allowing you to do some cool stuff too. Um, can deformers work across multiple subtools? No, you can merge them together, do your thing, and then split them back up, but I don't think you can do across multiple. Oh, I'm sure they used a ton of CGI. I would hope. I would imagine. Um, Balkan, Serbian, Croatia. I think Croatian DNA test. Actually, what's weird is my last name, Russian, Croatian. But uh, my DNA, I'm a Welshman. How weird is that? Um, let's see here. Wait, ray mesh. Outline a doorway with bricks, including an arch across the top. Ugh. Maybe I would go in here. I'm not. I'm not in a ray mesh wizard that Paul Gabriel is. Um, ooh, that one I'm not so sure. Um, sorry, before I leave, I'll try and catch up here. Um, mouse pin, ray mesh, mesh splat spline bridge when auto generate false. <laughs> Actually, yeah, let me show you that really quick because that'll come in handy here too. Let's just really quickly grab a sphere here say split mass points w control drag this out this is all in my uh, zbrush 2023 what's new we'll do a zero mesh half to upside down to zero 
this one, what I'll usually do is I'll like, oop, mask, pin, U to U, and then we have a slime bridge here. Um, and this will create all sorts of stuff. Usually what I'll do is turn branches and capillaries off, tension all the way up to 100, and now I've got a cool little slime bridge. And the other cool thing too is these are all different polygroups. If you ever need to do anything individually, if you want to grab all these, just grab a piece of them, Control Shift Q, polygroup grow all, mask and invert, go through here. We could even do a little bit of dynamics. So dynamic cloth is another way you could have fun with this too. Dynamic cloth, simulation iterations. Um, let's go inflate and expand, not, not that much, just a little tiny bit. So as it's dropping with gravity, it'll kind of maybe inflate a little bit. And so expand's gonna allow it to kind of do some funny stuff. Let's maybe just hold inflate. There we go. So you can kind of drip these down. Um, and then if you need to, uh, you can hold down shift. And so here's another thing too. If you hold down shift and smooth, that that's kind of like when we were talking earlier about closed circle versus open circle. Holding down shift to smooth is like open circle. It'll just decimate your volumes. If you hold down shift and let go of shift, it'll try and retain your volumes a little bit more. Um, but again, you can go through here individually. Let's grab this here. And then you can go through individually and like inflate. Um, whoa inflate stuff, uh, smooth stuff down, whatever. So anyway, so yeah, as, as the strands get towards the middle, you can go through here and shift smooth and that'll give them that little bit more of that drippy look. Um, I, that didn't exist back when I was doing this guy here, but would have been totally useful, I think, in my, um, or my little garbage pail kid, but I think in the videos I went through and did that. In fact, if you want more information on the making of that stuff, it's all right here. Knock yourself out. As well as here, have fun. There's some maybe useful stuff in there. It's at Michael Pavlovich. Is that really what it is? Huh. Interesting. Cool. All right. Um, these spheres roots for a tree. Any features getting displaced? The displacement of the bark material onto the roots. You could do a nano mesh and have it follow the geometry for bark. Um, or you can drag alpha. Oh, we didn't even talk about dragging alphas. Eh, you can drag alphas. You can, honestly, if I was doing bark, I would toss that into Substance Painter or whatever and just put a bark material on it. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, Matthew, I'm not exactly sure about the bark stuff. I'd have to think about that. But like I said, probably UV it, throw it in there, apply a bark material in this. Yeah, this Thursday on my channel, we'll finish this out. Maybe. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, everybody. I'll get out of here. Exclamation point. And have a good rest of your week.